Hey you guys, I wanted to come on here and talk about the backlash that we impose on ourselves when we invite people from the dominant society into our spaces. I'm sure you guys have seen the news of Marshall Mathers, AKA Eminem, dissing Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey and how everybody at this point is eating it up as well as siding with Eminem on the issue. And what I wanna do is I wanna actually cover four different instances where black people have given passes and invites to people from the dominant society and it actually has had a backlash effect and i'm sure that there are going to be more than just these four that i want to cover but i don't want the video to be too long so with that let's go ahead and get into the first person which we have is bad baby now i'm sure you you guys may or may not remember the entitled bratty and disrespectful little girl danielle brigoli aka bad baby or the cash me outside girl i thought that that might ring a bell if you don't remember she actually was the girl who rose and claimed fame to stardom for going on the dr phil show for showing basically downright abhorrent and deplorable behavior towards her mother and other siblings she went on the show and her family namely her mother was talking to dr phil about her daughter's level of disrespect and contempt she had towards her and during the show dr phil had actually asked danielle a question to which she replied her infamous line which was cash me outside how about that this line was notorious because it caught fire on social media everybody made memes out of it basically social media had a field day out of it and even a song eventually was created out of this catchphrase and unfortunately it elevated her popularity it granted her access to numerous venues including even a makeup deal worth I want to say $900,000 in a rap career as a result of that and one thing I also want to make note of is if you guys think about it, this is just a pure example of how America is complicit in the celebration of mediocrity. I mean, literally in our country, it's been shown that we can celebrate and encourage behavior that is worthy of condemnation and outright lamentability, you know, when other countries view it. The worst part about this entire experience is that she came into contact with our community and guess who co-signed this bratty teenage girl? black people i mean we invited her to the cookout we allowed her to capitalize off of a caricature stereotype of what a black woman represents i mean when you think about it we allow these people to come in and without properly vetting them to determine the purity of their character we give them all our endorsements we boost their egos only further contributing to the already insurmountable disrespect they have for society in general she has the nerve to indulge in the typical cultural appropriation by sporting braids. She speaks in a black scent or a fake black accent. All this because nothing says I'm black like getting braids and talking in a stereotypical manner, right? Just recently, I had read an article where she was actually caught saying that black women were bald headed. And you have to understand, you know, there is a massive stigma going on, you know, with black women and hair care and all that and how they're undesired when it comes to their texture of hair. So that already is a level of disrespect to which I feel like no one should be able to come back from. Now, because the statement was made, she was forced to apologize, which you guys know is never sincere. I mean, and this is my thing. It's 2019. It's almost 2020. I know a lot of you claim to be ignorant to racism, but please stop using that as an excuse because not only are you being disrespectful, but you're also insulting our intelligence by thinking we accept this reprehensible and ill-mannered and faux exchange of atonement. Now, of course, they'll still continue to do this purposeful behavior, but I only hope that these individuals come across the right person. I mean, who may just make them regret their reckless comportment? That's all I have to say on that one. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually move on to the second problematic person that we have on the list. And it shows here. I'm pretty sure you probably know or probably have heard of this person, um, but we will go to Post Malone. This, I just have to sigh. This is just really ridiculous. Austin Richard Post, AKA Post Malone, was caught in some controversy in the year 2015. If a lot of you don't know who he is, he is an American rapper. 
and there was some audio or some video that had surfaced in 2015 of him saying the n-word now one thing that you guys i kind of hope you learn about me as i continue to make these videos i'm not shocked by this type of behavior because one thing i learned when you really start to pay attention to the world and the systemic oppression that embodies this world nothing is shocking or surprising i mean naturally black people take issue when other races of people repeat this word because the word has a sensitive and historical context behind it and we obviously don't like when other people say it because other races of people did not have to experience the trauma and slavery that black people had to go through and still go through to this day it's really unfortunate when you think about it because even after this audio surface guess what black people still worked with them they completely disregarded the fact that he showed no respect toward us and all this does is it just it paints the black community in a negative image i mean it makes it look like we literally accept any type of insubordination no matter the circumstance and we will take them in with open arms with no type of repercussions our community doesn't see to fully grasp doesn't seem to fully grasp the understanding of self-worth and value because i felt i feel like if we did if we knew what our worth was and understood well the value we would definitely be a force to be reckoned with no one would dare show any kind of discourteous actions or dialogue toward us and that's just my opinion but i really do think if we actually knew what we were worth and how much other people value us if they were ever disrespectful toward us they wouldn't be able to get away with a lot of the things that they've gotten away with up till now and i don't want to continue to talk about this wretch oh my goodness and we can move on to the third egregious and abominable behemoth yes jewels oh goodness yes jules aka juliana goddard is the monstrous atrocious and intolerable excuse of a human being who disrespected black women black women on a consistent basis now this one was put on by black women it is by black men sorry it is alleged that she had multiple relations with notable black men in the industry to get her level of prestige she made a rap and i really don't even want to call it that i mean if you want to call it that i thought it was stupid and idiotic but she was dissing black people when she had rapped a lyric saying her behind was big and her skin isn't black while being celebrated by soldier boy and other black men in the background and this is the thing black men unfortunately you will have to take accountability for this one um this disaster because the only way she garnered success and fame was off of the privates of black men allegedly um but by now i'm sure you guys are noticing the common theme here each time these people get their beginning it's usually from the people in our community lifting them up placing them on a pedestal and one thing i really hope i can only hope is i heavily encourage us to stop doing that because we always take the l in the long run in the end it doesn't matter how down these other races of people seem we just can't chance it and so to that i say stop inviting them to the cookout i cannot stress this enough we are closed we are out of passes we are out of invites black people until we get this is straightened out now the last despicable act on this list and i'm sure you guys have already guessed it marshall mathers aka eminem now i'm well aware of the fact i might catch some heat for this one but i don't care because we have some major unpacking to do and this needs to be addressed already okay so here is the issue with this grown man boy uh of course brought on by black men in detroit namely eight mile if you don't know and he eventually went on to become the highest selling male artist in hip hop. Now, one thing I wanna pause for a second, but doesn't that sound weird to you guys? Like it, hip hop is a predominantly black genre, yet the best selling artist is a non-black person. Um, yeah, I'll say that for another video. But anyways, he proudly said the N word in the beginning of his career, as well as irreverence towards black women. And one thing also, this is just another thing I want to mention as well. You know, it really is true what Malcolm X said all those years ago. He once said that the black woman is the most disrespected person in the United States. He was definitely spot on with that because 
it's a shame over 50 years later that that saying still rings true today. Now, also one thing I want to say, uh, he actually just recently, uh, to my understanding, he went on to diss Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey, which, you know, I'm pretty sure you've seen on social media, the story is pretty trendy right now. Now, one thing I do want to make clear, he is about Eminem is a battle rapper, so I wouldn't expect anybody to win against him easily in that category. But again, I just kind of have to ask us, how did this man get to the get to this point to begin with? And, you know, it's just kind of the same thing. Black men put him on. They ignored his hate and contempt and ridicule he had, and they continue to work with them. Now, I had to digress for just another moment, you guys, and ask, why Why do we do this? I mean, are we so desperate for acceptance and validation that we take the smallest straw and equate this to a possible form of elevation in our community? I mean, because when you really look at it, history has shown that anytime we let someone else in from another race, it never works in our favor. Yet we refuse to learn from history and we choose to continue wallowing in ignorance and to deny that this behavior isn't a pattern, it would be the equivalent of maintaining a perpetual mind with cognitive dissonance and na naivete. Um, and just to kind of go back to what I was saying, Nick Cannon, he actually had released a diss track to protect his wife at the time, which he should do. And later on to protect, you know, the mother of his child, Mariah Carey, because I mean, when you think about it, what man in his right mind would allow continued disrespect towards the mother of a child? And he even tried to check Eminem on his conduct by actually, you know, he was wanting to fight him in the ring. And Eminem, of course, you know, he became cowardice. He tried to back down. Because he knows that when a second to that level, you know, obviously he wouldn't be able to compete in a physical form. But one thing that he has to realize is nobody's going to sit back and continue to let them being, you know, be disrespectful and discourteous and savage towards our community. The fact that you are even in this community and are allowed to diss us while we so passively let you is an action that actually warrants immediate discipline on our end. You know, obviously we had to take accountability for even allowing him into our community and get this far. So we do have to take some kind of responsibility and accountability for that. Now, now that we actually made it through this list, I actually want to close out with this. Black people, if you continue to let people keep walking all over you, make money off of you, disrespect you without enacting any form of consequence, then the world is just going to continue to see you as nothing more than a pushover and you're never going to be taken seriously. And I'm going to put it like this. They may pretend to be down with you. They may like your food. They may like your music, your swag, your coolness, but the truth is, at the end of the day, they aren't down with you like that. They see how profitable black culture is. And the only thing that they realize is that they can achieve all of the success without worrying about facing the same struggle you have to face. You guys have to understand that they can do all this. These are people who don't look anything like you. They can like your culture and emulate your culture, but it never ends well for us in the end. I just have to reiterate that. Now, what I want to do is I actually do want to have you guys weigh in in the comments section. Just let me know your thoughts on the situation. Do you think we need to establish harsher penalties for these people when they pull up on us in our spaces? Or do you think, you know, hey, should we just exclude them from the cookout altogether? Um, definitely let me know you guys' thoughts on this. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.